Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. My name is Avi. Hope you're having a great time and you're healthy. In a previous video, I show you how to record sounds of guitar with the Spark Amp and the Presonus Studio One DAW. Now that I have recording material, I thought it'd be cool to record a little jingle to all my videos. So that's the subject of today's video. I'm going to take you through all the recording process using mostly the Spark to record to to generate guitar sounds and Studio One to record those sounds and how to make a small piece of music. Now about the surroundings, this is just where I'm spending some vacation and so I thought it'd be nice to um, shoot a video showing this instead of my apartment for once. So the first thing is that I need to, I'm sorry. So the first thing is that I need to figure out a theme for my channel. So I think it should go something like this. Now that I have a rough idea of the theme that I want to have, we need to record it. So here it comes. Let's go over the setup once again very quickly. Here is the Spark Amp. This is where I'm going to get all my guitar sounds. It is connected to my computer with a USB cable from back there and to the computer here. And that is my computer. And here's the PreSonus Studio One DAW um, ready to record. And if you want to go deeper into uh, this setup, so just go and check the link that should appear around here. Um, I've done a video previously about that subject. Now, I want you to guys to keep in mind that this is really basic tutorials. Now, I'm not taking you into mastering or any advanced mixing. This is really like a beginner's tutorial for a simple reason, because I'm a beginner myself. And I, I'm, I think it's interesting to have this kind of video because it, you know, it fits the match. You know, the, the teacher is a beginner and the student's a beginner. And so the student can realize that, yeah, you can do it. So there's no problem. You don't have to be a pro. You don't have to learn from the pros. Uh, beginners can do it. Now, that doesn't mean that what I'm doing is right. Or that doesn't mean that what I'm doing is awesome. That means that you can do it too. Nothing more, nothing less. You can do it. Beginners can do it. And you'll have a lot of fun. Let's start. So here we are in Studio One. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to record a beat. To do this, I'm going to record a drum kit. While I was reading some of your comments on Facebook, some of you asked how to record a drum using PreSonus. And actually, I found it was not quite easy. So we're going to dive into how to set up your PreSonus in order to record drums. This is the PreSonus start page. Here you see you have a configure external device. Just click on this. And here you see that I already configured it. Just click add. And in the list, go down to PreSonus. And there you can select a QWERTY keyboard. Just click OK. So I'm not going to do this right now because I've done it already. But you guys should click OK. And here you find your QWERTY keyboard. Now, I'm doing this because I don't have an actual keyboard, a MIDI keyboard. So I need to use my computer in order to record the drums. Just click OK. And you're good to go. So as I said before, I just created an empty project. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new track. And here you see, I've already got it. It's called drum. Actually, I'm going to call it kick drum. Um, color is okay. Good. 
input is has to be the QWERTY keyboard and the output is going to be presence presence is the um, default instrument set when you're using presonus 1 click OK now you see that you have an instrument set I have to select a drum kit first so now here's the trick since I need to have an input this input is going to come here you have you have this little uh, control button here see here it says control and here you have QWERTY keyboard and that's the trick the nice thing that you can see is that we asked for a QWERTY keyboard but it actually says AZRT I have an AZRT keyboard not a QWERTY keyboard and here you see that in the track you see that this is being uh, recorded this is the input so that's good now I have to select the correct octave select one yeah Now I'm ready to record, so let's do it. Now that this is done, let's try to record a guitar now. The first guitar I'm going to record is actually a bass. Let's add a new track. And this time it's not going to be an instrument, it's going to be an audio. Let's call it bass. Let's change the color. Okay. Okay. So now we have to configure here the input. And it's going to be the pre sonus one. So it says input. Just apply. Okay. And here you have the input one. And now we can record. Okay, let's go for our first guitar here. I'm going to add a new track. And now it's basically going to be the same process beat here with the drum kit is a little off so I'm gonna mute it because actually I think it's uh, uh, it's disturbing me so I'm just going to record the guitar okay so what I think is that for a tutorial it's okay but as far as the music is concerned uh, it's really off beat, off beat so I'm gonna do it again it would have been tedious to show you all the process and all the details of recording actually this, these parts um, the drum part uh, being all done uh, with the keyboard has been particularly uh, tedious and it was a lot of back and forth uh, recording and re-recording and re-re-recording -re -re again and again and again until um, I found the good beat and still it's not perfect I'm not completely satisfied with it but I'm, I'm gonna leave it like this I think a good idea would be to make you listen to it as it is right now. So let's listen to it. So here we are now, going for the mix. I'm really not sure I'm going to change much to it. Uh, I think mostly I'm going to lower the kick drum a little bit. 
So let's try and lower it just a tad and see what happens. Let's say four, minus four. Here, two, minus four. So that's the kick drum. Turn off the lead guitar a bit. Let's go back to a minus four and see what happens to the global mix. I will try to make the bass and the rhythm guitar appear a bit more by uh, kicking them on the side. Let's try first with something equal. And also, I will try to put the lead guitars somewhere else. I may want to kick also the lead guitars on the side too and have some effect like this so that the lead guitar is going to be heard but yet still a bit down maybe i will pop this one a bit up okay and see what happens now i don't want to have the rhythm guitar and the lead guitar exactly on the same side because okay so i'm gonna shift the rhythm guitar a bit more in the center and the lead guitar on the outside. Basically, you get the idea. It's a back and forth process. What's my process at this point? I'm only using my ears. I'm not going for any sort of process that is predetermined or uh, some uh, recording a template, you know, or a mixing template, like the guitar should go there and the bass should go there and the drums should go there and that sounds good and that doesn't sound good and you should pop this up and pop this down. Um, at this point, you know, I'm really only using my ears to see what I like and what I don't like and that's my guide. So I don't think that's the best solution I'm only saying that this is all I have for now. I really hope I'm gonna get some chops on mixing and recording. Okay, before we go, there's one last thing that is important that I want to show you. It is how to export your mix. So once you've done this, you, have, you can export your, what they call the mix down. Here's the trick. So when you do the export here, this is the location where the file is going to be exported. This is the name of the file, um, the format here. So I chose to export in MP3 format, but you could export to any other kind of uh, export. Here is really the important thing. Here, these are the markers from and to export. So it says start and end. So if you export using this here, this toggle here between selected markers, start and. So that means that there are markers in your mix from which and to which you're going to export. Now, where are these markers? Here you see a flag. There you go. Now, when I clicked on the flag, a little line here appeared. So this is really important. Now it's going to start. This is a start flag. If I want it to start recording at a certain moment, I have to move my start flag. You got to move the end flag to the position where you want your export to stop. Now I put my end flag and now I'm going to be able to go to the mix down pane. Okay, here's the pop up. Now it says it's going to rec uh, record export into work music, obvious channels theme, mix down, MP3 file, export between the start and end markers. And so let's do it. And it says I have some clipping. Ah, uh, okay, so it's not perfect. What do you want? So here it says, do you want to delete the exported files? When it's got clipping, then 
one thing that you should keep in mind, it's going to show. Uh, that means that this clipping is going to be uh, heard in your mix. One thing to not to get this is to re-record what was too loud and to lower the input. If you don't want to delete the exported files, just click on no. Okay, I'll just click on no. And here it will open a pop-up for you. So I'm here again. Oh, how did that happen? That must be magic. So there you have it. How to record guitar sounds using the Spark and this Presonus Studio One DAW in order to create a small piece of music. I really hope you guys like this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, well, that's it for today.